Let me know once you're started, and I will begin the uh, new day stuff. We're good. So, the day began. It began a couple hours ago, really, but the day begins for you all as you kind of... Mm, that's not the right song. I need a good song for this one. That works. Tarek is, again, in his little throne from where he was last left. The group, and like the other soldiers of Tarek, sitting around, kind of occasionally screaming out a word, skull, for something, and then drinking like madmen, even though it is the morning. As you all kind of get your breakfast, it's this big feast. And for those wondering, yes, Percival is outside the tent with a blanket and a pillow on him. He didn't sleep on the bare ground, uncovered. What are uh, what are you all enjoying as you kind of have this breakfast time? Get back into the voices for your characters. Orlean. Starting with Aurelia. Oh no, I was gonna make a joke. She has baby. You, you're eating the baby? No. no. I'm <laughs> saying she's eating with the baby, you twat. <laughs> I know. Well, I'm fucking with you. So she's eating with the baby. Jackie, uh, Orlane, you guys I'm sub- just got back from that little moment you had. Yeah. With your, uh, do you remember what weapons you two swapped real quick? Monk and Rogue. Starting weapons? Yep. I'm currently subjecting Jackie to... Rogue and... <laughs> Monk. Monk. You swapped your starting weapons. Mm-hmm. Confirmation? Yes. So, Good I want... That confirmation. Check later on. Fact check later. Um, Deidre. Yes. What are you thinking about? What are you what are you doing right now? As again, this is the morning, so it is the morning after your in-depth talk with Tarek about reason. <laughs> about a, why? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I've tried that to cry. Uh, okay. Good. Um Deidre's still reeling from that talk. Um my love, you're you're you're, you're EBDB. You are. Am I? Uh, can I get out of hell? No. I wish. You're too short. Wait, what? Naturally, we're closer to hell as being five five and below. I understand this, but please, for the love of God, I'm trying to drag God down with me. As you should. You don't need to be toes and cards. Maybe you'll reach. Um, I'm dead. So what were you saying, Orlane? I was going to subject Jackie to essentially it's always sunny in Philadelphia, the corkboard moment. God doesn't want you to say that because it, I know what they're saying. <laughs> Crazy man in front of the corkboard. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, yeah, fuck you. Um, we're gonna, but we'll get, we'll come back to that. Deja, huh? What's on your mind? What's oh right. What's on Deja's mind after the talk of reason and why you fight from terror? Sadness. Um, it's sadness. Yes, Deja is still like reeling from that, and like Deja's always sort of standoffish. Um, like, they always put up that standoffish, like, sort of air 
whenever they're anywhere. Um, but it's even more than usual. Um, like, if, like, like, you know, like, if looks could kill was a phrase, it's not even if looks could kill. It's if energy and, like, that kind of thing could kill. Like, if their aura could kill. Like, people can probably tell, don't come near this person right now. You're they might just... Knives, you'd be fucking loaded. Yeah. Yeah. If vibes could kill, yes. Um, and they're very much just being, like, um, well, like, they're very much being very introspective, and so they're, even though they're very, like, aggressive outwardly, they're also not paying as much attention as they usually do, um, because they're usually, like, very hypervigilant. So, like, if someone comes near them, they probably won't even notice is the only thing. But once they are aware of the person's, you know, like, presence, they're, they're going to be violent if the person doesn't approach well, I guess. Okay. Um, Like, they're not even thinking about food. I don't even know if they know it's morning. They're just sort of in a corner, just, like, sitting. So not far from you, you know, sitting in your corner, deep in edgy thought, um, you do hear the ramblings of what is normally the sanest person of you, outside of Aurelia, just going off towards Jackie. Arlene, open the floodgates. This will be fun. I get to be in Arlene's voice again. I have to actually load my notes for this because I have notes on this <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> it got silent. Hey Jackie, can you? Dibi dibi. Am I an Evie DB? You did go to. Good thing my new computer is coming in tonight. I just got a nice. That being said, hey Jackie. Yeah. You are currently what? listening to Orlane absolutely go insane for like a good solid 10 minutes over things that don't make sense, even to you being his best friend. Like full, he, it's, it's just the mailroom scene from It's Always Sunny. And you're just standing there like, are you okay? Because he he does nothing seems to correlate. No, but you don't understand that that kind of rambling. Oh, it's worse. It's I can explain this and you're going to call me insane over it, but I have proof and it's been told to me, and I need to un I need someone to look at me as if I've not lost my fucking mind. It's almost like you can hear him in the distance. That mocking, straight, white bread man's voice. Too late. And just the... Because I know that's not, not happening, actually. Just... I have, like, three different things I'm looking into, Jackie. My dear, lovely Jackie Lynn. J of ever. I need you to listen to me, and I just... Just pick one for me to... To focus on right now. I have three of them. Just pick one. Don't worry about the other two. I'll get to them eventually. And Jackie's just nodding along. Just... One, two, With or three, Jackie. That? Oh, no. I have these written down. I know you do. You know what? Let's go for three. He runs a hand through his hair for a second of, of course you'd do that to me. I asked, I received, damn it. <laughs> okay, so you know those beasts that we control or whatever the fuck they are? 
gods, yeah. whatever, you know, shrunken little tiny things or whatever that's just in our brain for whatever reason. You know, fate. Or them, yeah. Fate. Am I good? Yeah. No. I had to fix my entire setup for that to work. <laughs> oh, I'm just not allowed to ramble as Orlane, apparently. Um, so where was I? One, two, or three. And then Some... God said no. Something uh, about the beasts and the voices in our heads and fate. Oh, Orlane was losing his mind. Okay, normal. Um, so, Jackie, I need you to understand something about these stupid fucking things, these bloody cursed things that are trying to drive us insane and probably have already drive, driven me mad. I do believe they're connected to our enemies. <laughs> I can see how that might make sense. Because if you think about it, we got these mechs, these beasts, whatever they're calling themselves. The We got them after we whatever did that happened at the towers initially. We got them after right after that. So they have to be connected to our enemy, right? They have to. In some way. I, and because of what I was told by fuckwad did fucking straight whatever over there, like I don't know personally, but if it's connected to the towers, then what if these things and he taps his gauntlet with the with with the like a little device in it sphere gem whatever it is. And just goes the materia. Yeah, I for forgot it. Sorry. Um, yeah, materia guard. He taps the materia guard and just goes, "What if they don't choose heroes more than they choose ideals that match their own personalities?" And they just go, "Cool, I like this one." And then they're just like, "Can we choose?" No, because we don't get that choice. That's not a thing we can get. Well, then why don't we just remove them? I can't! I'm the one keeping us from all of us being found, remember? You have to be near me, and I don't want you near me, I want to die. You're but not I, allowed. I know. Regardless, regardless, what if they choose ideals? What happens if we do die? Do they just choose somebody else that's closer? Or someone who's better? What do they do? What happens? What? What? He hello? Are you asking them? No, he doesn't want to talk to them right now. <laughs> <laughs> also, to clarify, it's not just Orlane keeping everybody, you know, covered. It's the gems themselves keeping everybody covered. Oh no, I have the notes on that. It's being around Orlane. I believe that was in first session when he was the only one that had one. 
it was I have the what? note on one of the first sessions of you have to be around Orlane for his his stealth to count towards yours essentially because then it would stop everything being tracked. And that's also when er Orlane was just like, what if I just left? What if I said no? And just like, well, story beat, come here. Like I will then I'm going to go ahead and softly say you don't have to stick around Orlane. You your materia guards do protect you. Good luck in trying to separate Jackie. Oh, I know. Orlane has fully gone through most of his insane ramblings, and he just ends it on the, is there an option where they just straight up take over us? Is that it? Does that end everything? Do they have a new body, or is this, uh, are we just puppets? What's happening here? Orlane. Yes. Wisdom save. Oh, joy. No, no, no. Uh, Arcana check, please. Not much better, my brosef. I believe in you. You've got this. I wouldn't say that. Like this is that. a dead roll. You've <laughs> got this. I believe. Yeah, stop. I'm not believing in anything else other than Okay. It could be worse. It could be worse. So an eleven. This is just a general check. This is not like a like a DC thing. So this is a general check. Eleven will get you some information. The bare minimum of the information, but not like an in-depth one. Is that okay with you? Sure. Or Lane? Yeah, it's good for me. Oh no, you about to go E B D V. Am I good? You've gone to... Can I be freed from hell? No, you're not in hell. You're exiled. I'm good now. Okay. So, do you want it, or do you just want to, like, I'm good? Fuck it, I can't get more insane. Add to my sanity points, why don't you? There's a very quiet, like, it's not a voice anymore, it's more like a very quiet presence in your mind that's just not saying anything, but you can feel like they have their hand up, kind of like a child, waiting. Just the distant stare for a little bit, going, what? If it's any consolation, when you die, I will die as well. We are connected. Not helpful. Then, um, if I die, you will not die. Are you lying? No, I would not lie to you. I'm not good at it. What the fuck does that mean? Hold on, wait a second. You can't lie? He goes, into the he goes into the depths. <laughs> what was the last thing you said, by the way? Just, you can't lie? Yep. And then just goes into the depths. Every time he is attempted to lie to you, he's always asked permission. <laughs> he absconds, yes. Now, with this group, being their crazy selves for the morning. We move from one group. Oh, hold on, make sure this is a clear board. Okay. We move from one group to another. Would you would you two kindly place your tokens in here? As you two are, as you two are in there, you know, kind of vibing almost, you're waking up, as it seems. Oh, who do I want to bully from my NPC list? You are waking up, just waking up, actually. You feel like you've been asleep for... Ugh, ages. 
until you realize you two are not alone in this room. There is another person in this room with you. Mm. I'll use him. There is a small little elven boy right here in the room with you guys who is waking up with you. He seems just as lost as the other, the rest of you. And in front of you is an open door. Trifon, I'll ask you first. Can you please introduce yourself and describe yourself? I love how you put me on the spot first, you bitch. Because I know Dane already has one planned and he can improv. <laughs> You know, you would think you would put the one who you know, know can improv in. <laughs> but, yeah, no. Trifon sits up as he's waking up, and he's... He, he's a satyr with, like, black fur, black hair, green eyes. Uh what you would expect a satyr's horns to look like, goat horns. It's me One thing people might also notice is the fact that he's a literal beanpole. <laughs> By, like, looking at him, he does not look like someone who would normally be out in the field as a soldier. But... Yeah, no, he's fucking half awake right now, so there's not much response from him for for, for anything. So you're just kind of like waking up, kind of got that groggy look to you. Groggy look, and... staring at the other two people, just like, who the fuck are you guys? God damn, Aurelia! He was just introduced, and you already called him a twink. Great. <laughs> he has existed in this campaign for five goddamn seconds. Hey, like, come on. If the shoe fits. <laughs> Dean, or Dane, go. So Please introduce as, yourself and describe yourself. <laughs> as you look about the room, you can see what seems to be a very peacefully composed uh very built slightly older man just on the floor he's just peacefully laying there just almost dead asleep or what looks to be until he opens his eyes and you can see no iris or actual pupil they're mainly a dull yellow grow a glow excuse me sorry and he's he has very basic garbs on a basic black almost uh cloth shirt little ties to make sure it has a collar on it and just very simple robes and a cloak that covers one shoulder and you can see on uh what was it he has short sleeves and on both of his arms Specifically, the the right one that you can see, there are cracks going from his knuckles all the way up to his mid forearm, that looks as if it's shattered earth with a dull yellow glow. And, in complete opposition to Typhon, uh, he is very built, very well, very athletic to say the least. He is built for any type of combat you can imagine, and you can only think of the scars that would line that body. And he slowly rises, not so much as to compose himself, but more to look upon his surroundings. It's very obvious he notices you and the other person in the room. And very quickly, you can ascertain he is a very intense presence. It's a piercing look. No irises, just 
a solid, a almost resting bitch face. <laughs> well, you did not just build that up so much to end the rest of you. I'm sorry. He's I got, tired. I got tired. sent with the an opposite of trifid. <laughs> um, we don't need to learn this one's name. You'll see. You'll see here in a second. As you two kind of watch this third one kind of wake up, skitter to the wall. Look at both of you. Oh, hold on. I am gonna reload my uh, roll twenty. I am. Let, I'm a fucking frame per minute here. <laughs> Take it down, brother. Uh, it kind of skitters to the wall a bit, just kind of scared out of his fucking wits, looking at you two. And then looks at the open door, as you both do notice. The open door. Once my map loads in, I will continue. Come on, map, don't fuck me. To be fair, the map seems to be fucking massive. It takes my computer with my internet a good minute to load. Yeah, let me try something real quick. I might go EBDB here in a second, or I might load instantly. It depends. Oh, I just turned off. I I, I just turned off oh, my Ethernet. I'm gonna try one more time. Reload. Da, 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 da. In the corner. I also love and how polar opposite of uh, Bane's description. Just this nice description. Me, I don't fucking know, man. He's a satyr. <laughs> man, you could get more fucking info from like a dollar fifty-five newspaper. There's nothing particularly remarkable about <laughs> him, other than the fact that he is fucking over six feet tall and built like he's going to get blown over by a stiff breeze. <laughs> I thought you were going to say six feet tall and a twink. Well, no, that's a really I'm calling that. <laughs> it sounds accurate, though. He's just a tall twink. A tree twink. A tree yeah, twink. I, I love that. Dane is, like, I, th I think I had his height at, like, five foot eight or something. So he's a little bit shorter than you. But he is built. I'm sorry, I just <laughs> fucking Orlane. <laughs> I'm writing that down on my notes. Okay, back on the railroad, people. So, we need to be know what mood Orlane is in. <laughs> people, people, people. Okay, back yes. on track. As. The third one kind of sees the open door just behind you, uh, Trifon, and, and runs for it and gets a little bit there mm, and starts trying to run away again. But you see him get about 10 feet out and then you hear something. It's like something disturbs the grass before you hear the crack of multiple bones and the last little yelp of someone whose lungs have just been crushed in about three seconds before into the ground. Tryphon just stares at the open door when he hears that happen and then just slowly turns to look at his current partner in imprisonment, just like, I don't think it's going to be a good idea to leave. You see Dane just, like, start basic stretches, because he's stiff. Like, you know, a, a venture outside means death. Seems like it. Um... I feel sorry for the fool. Poor soul that had a quick burial. Um, do you feel like you drank too much last night? I have a horrid headache. I feel like I got hit by a car. 
Wait, car do cars exist in Psycho? <laughs> sort of. You're not wrong, but uh, they, they sort of exist. Okay, so yeah, Trifon just because I feel like I've been hit by a car. What is a car? Ow. Trifon, give me, a, give me an inside <laughs> check real quick. Uh, all right. Your first roll. Uh, that's not a good one at all. <laughs> Make me, you made me proud. <laughs> Dane, do, do me a quick that? favor. Damn. Hold on, hold on, Dane. Do me a quick favor. Yeah, yeah. Roll, roll deception with advantage. Listen, <laughs> listen. Trifon is fucking out of it, dude. Come on. <laughs> I love that your first roll was that one. <laughs> oh. Okay. No, so I oh god, I didn't get much better. Uh, uh that's fifteen twenty, my man. Yeah, I know. Uh, was we that? need uh, beyond twenty. Yeah, that's the problem. Oh, I, I don't think it's set up. I, I, I'm already in the campaign, so go ahead and roll it naturally. I'm, I'll keep an eye on the campaign while you kind of do right. that in the I'm between. Sorry. It's Gucci, you're fine, okay, man. So you said deception? Deception with advantage. I mean, that's still about the same, you, yeah. You know good and goddamn well what a car is. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, not called a car, it's called a transport vehicle, but it's a fucking car. It's got four wheels, an engine, and a steering wheel. It's a fucking car. <laughs> My best explanation. It's an armor car. Yeah. Dane wouldn't have been trying to deceive. He'd legitimately be like, I cannot. What? I'm Neither waking of them up. can I... think right now. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, Trifid, after a moment, just flops back down on the ground. It's just like. I don't know about you, but uh, I'm going the fuck back to sleep. <laughs> Do as you wish. The mind needs to clear for me as well. Uh, and I'm just gonna start like looking about, just like what. There are windows uh, here, here, and here. These are windows. Okay. Those are windows. Got it. So two of the windows. Okay. All, and the last one looks at an open area where uh, this open area right here. And if you do want to look at that, uh, you would see something like a fucking land shark with tentacles is swimming in the ground. I do not mean to dis uh, disturb your slumber, but may I ask, what is your name? And second, have you seen anything like a land shark that is swimming through grass before? Um... Well, my name's Trifon, and I don't think I have... You have not. Yeah, no, I haven't seen one of those things. Because that seems to be the thing that is trapping us in here, as of the moment. Fantastic. So, what, we can't even see it coming? I mean, I could see it pretty well, right? Very. You can see one of its tentacles, and what you, uh, go ahead and give me a, you're looking directly at it, right? Uh, I'm trying to, yeah. I'm go looking into the you... window, yeah. So, perception. Yeah, go ahead and give me a percep, yeah, percep, bud. Percep Damn. Damn. Oh. That's a one. 
Oh god, we are not off to a good start here. <laughs> you go like you're looking at Trifon and you're like as Trifon asks, do you have any details about it? You look back. Where the fuck's the tentacle go? It's not in the courtyard anymore. <laughs> like all I see is plants over there. I'm like I think it also has the ability to shape shift. So to answer your question, no, you will not see it coming. Well, I'm not about to go out there and test it. Apparently, uh. that does seem like the worst option. But our poor compatriot did also find out the hard way. Do we even know why we're in here? Is that a question for Dean or the DM? Well, it would be partially both, depending on whether or not we actually would know. DM? No, nothing comes to your brains. Your minds are too foggy. All you know is that you can feel like you can summon a weapon. Something that is normal to you guys. It's basically like as best it can be described it's essentially like tensing a muscle you can feel it in your soul so you know you can... what the fuck is that gift jackie what? look at muted bc <laughs> <laughs> what happened to not derailing guys get off I didn't expect single wave Yoshi to take me out. <laughs> Damn it, sorry. Either yeah. way, Trifon does say, yeah. does ask, do we even know why we're in here? You too dangerous, like stop stretching for a minute and just I believe I drank too much and I ended up here. Though, from how I could have gotten by that beast, I do not know. That is a good question, because I'm not even sure how I got in here. After that realization, I think Dane is just going to try and, well, as Curry said, try and, like, tense and summon the weapon. Just like... What weapon do you, you summon first? What is your opening weapon, my friend? Thus revealing your class to everybody. Rifle. Uh, yeah, it's the rifle, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure if it was one of the personal ones or if it was just the rifle. So yeah, I will I'll summon the rifle. And it kinda I would assume it just kinda drops into one of his hands. Uh yes, also allow me to see your actual inventory for the time being. It is a hunting rifle. Mm -hmm. oh, 2d10 plus 1. I know ranged weapon was not the best option for a cleric, but Rule of Cool overtook the uh, thing of like, oh, hey, this is fun. And I will ask, you do have the rifle's weapon description in your um, thing. What ammo are you loading out with? Uh, let me witness it real quick. Shock? Uh, I believe it is. Oh, I don't yeah. know what which, but is shock and charge. One of which is a buff ammo. The other one is a debuff ammo. Buff ammo. Your your buffing ammo. Hmm. Or debuff. My buffing ammo. Okay, so I believe that one is charge, and the other one is shock. Uh, you can change these at a long rest. Because if you could change them on the fly, that'd be overpowered. Yeah, I gotcha. So yeah, currently I have buffing lines applied. 
Uh, so you go ahead and summon it. It's like this long... Now, I've never got the chance to describe this before, but it is a long, almost huntsman-style bolt-action rifle. As you hold it in your hand, you can kind of feel this sting of electricity. But it's not bad. It doesn't hurt. It just... You can feel the pulse of it going up your arm, and you can feel this is not the only weapon you have, which to your knowledge, breaks the rules of reality, but you know it's not the only one you have. You're not sure why you know, but you just know. It does have a sling on it if you want to carry it, or you can desummon it and summon it at will. I guess Typhon's just going to witness Dane looking at it like he's like, what the fuck is this thing? <laughs> you no, know, Trifon's going to be staring at him now, just like. Oh, he's right. it like it, it's a big stick more than anything. That's that's mainly what he's doing. It's designed like a big stick, so uh, it's a thunderer's rifle. It is designed like the very drum or uh, the drumstick of the ride Jin for which he hits his drums. So it's very much. It's supposed to be designed like a stick, but then it's just got that added little butt and barrel to it. Yeah. After seeing D uh, Dane do that, though, Trifon is going to do the same. Just like, oh, what's the confusion? And then just sort of, like, did Dane reach out specifically when he had summoned his rifle? When Dane summoned it, he just kind of, like, held out his hand towards the sky. Or, not towards the sky, like, uh, in front of him, and then palm towards the sky. And I would assume it kind of, like, the barrel it, of so, what he would determine big stick is just fall into his hand. It didn't fall into your hand. It kind of materialized from the center of your hand and then outwardly grew, almost. Okay. Well... So no all of it, but it was just like, that's how it was summoned. Like, you were focusing on your hand for it to be held that way, so that's the way it appears. Yeah, it was, the way it was summoned. A quick yes or no question. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I, I don't get to describe these weapons often. I love ranting about them. I'm so sorry. I know, I know. Still, Trifon sees Dane do that, and he goes to imitate thing just like what's with the confusion what just happened and... so you, how do you hold your hand out like are you just tensing or are you holding your hand out hold uh holding holding his hand out okay so where's your palm facing up or down down you summon now you for some reason know you feel like something's off as you summon this massive great sword that looks that is a two-handed base where it should be a two-handed base and little grip on the actual blade itself. That's not the case. The blade itself is about half the width of a shield and half the Ooh. fucking weight of it as you grab it and then boom, you feel its weight and it's so fucking heavy but the longer you hold the handle of it, the hilt, it begins to pulse its energy into you. You feel this almost as it connects with you and it becomes lighter by the second. This is an unfamiliar weapon and just like Dane, you feel like this one is not alone. Like there is another one you could summon. Yeah, no, now it's Trifon's turn to stare. <laughs> Just both of them are giving the surprise Pikachu. Uh got it. Yeah, basically. Oh, yeah. Dane would be just like oh, still Dane like an, a stony cold face, oh, like emotionless. Stony cold face, like echo, uh, echo. yeah. Yep, I'm sorry. Doing something real quick. Just 
handle it for a moment. So sorry. Mm-hmm. There's the extension. It is a of massive delay, thing. delay, yeah. Oh, thank God. <laughs> There's the extension for the Beyond 20, so you can make D&D Beyond rolls on roll 20. All right. Nice. Thank you. Uh, so, surprise Pikachu for both of you. Yeah. The vibe, Dane, at least. The vibe, yeah. Dane is just still just stone cold face in a constant just level neutral look to his face. The most you've seen as emotion wise from his face is a slight down tilt of the eyebrows as he's curiously thinking of like what the f- like what the fuck is this thing in his hands? <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, Trifin just he after a little bit he does adjust his hold on the sword so that it's like he he plants the tip in the ground after a moment and just oh god that brain is soup at the moment Blech. But he plants the tip of the sword in the ground and looks over at Dane and just, well, at least we're not unarmed. You have a weapon. I have what looks to be a fancy walking stick. You could still hit people with it. This is indeed true. I feel as if there is some other use for it. I cannot ascertain what it is, though. <laughs> uh, dang. Suddenly, in your mind, the more you hold this weapon, you feel somebody talking to you. Somebody you've never heard before and don't think you would hear again. It is a gun. You need to pull the trigger of it to fire it off. It sends high velocity metal and harms others, if that helps. You see Dane's face just light up and just like Eyes simply just like glow for a split second, and it's like, did you hear that voice? What voice? Old age. Um. <laughs> Stay away, what? And it's not old age, just... friend. I guess he <laughs> he's just going to look at the weapon and just kind of ignore the voice other than the initial bit of advice it gave him and I guess he finds the trigger and just I guess aims it at the ground and pull, pulls it uh yeah you go ahead and pull it as it suddenly Let's out a blast that begins to basically ricochet around the whole room until it hits Trifon. And what oh. should cause injury, Trifon, you suddenly feel a lot like plus two sturdier for some reason. <laughs> yeah, no, after he gets hit, he stumbles it's like he's fully bracing for the pain before he just stops and then just slowly stands up straight and looks around before looking at Dane and just that didn't hurt. Do you well, have a little bit more muscle now? <laughs> I do not believe that is the case. But good assumption. Trifon's just now looking down at himself 
still just like, I'm not that skinny, am I? Oh, uh, by the way, Dane, mm -hmm. Trifon cannot hear the voice, but you know that for some reason. How much did I drink last night? Uh, nothing. You have no drinks. And you realize that's coming from behind you. Uh, uh, do I need to roll perception or something? No, you're good. You don't hear this. Dane good. is the only one hearing the voice. Gryphon is just entertaining himself with the sword, I guess. Big sword. We'll get to you. <laughs> Big sword. Yes. Uh, Dane, you hear the voice clear as day behind you. Dane's just gonna, like, slowly turn around and look behind him. You see this wispy essence of somebody who's without shirt, but only because they don't need it. They have steel plates on their arms with wooden bark kind of peeling out on the side, almost acting like pauldrons, but lifted. Like, if someone took the base of a tree and put it on some and put like bits of it around their shoulder that is the design of the upper torso it is a metal body with armored everything there are vines in between the metal plating and there the head itself is completely automaton based but none like you can remember it is and it almost feels like this individual's hair is made out of the very vines and roots that dane its old body as you do notice there is a tied waist of clothes meaning it only has technically pants and a jacket on the jacket being tied around the waist it is a gun it is primarily used to fire high velocity impact items a far distance to cause mass pain but yours seems to be one that causes mass pain or a helpful pleasure is not the correct word a helpful aid I'm gonna like look to my left and right just real quick and just look back at them Trifon are you looking at Trifon or the person in front of you at the person in front of me they are not facing you, but you can tell that this is not a person. In fact, this isn't even a living creature, as they are almost see-through. Hello there. Morning. You seem either shocked, or you do not seem to care about what I am. That is good. As long as I have faith, I do not care who may stand beside me. Faith is good. The All Mother of Trees is very kind to us all, isn't she? Well, I guess she was. The All Mother of Trees? Yes. Are you the keeper of this? garden no her garden has been blasphemized an act of blasphemy has taken place her garden has been abused her tree cut down I remember the day it was cut down I was there but that is not of any matter I cannot speak to you forever I just wish to let you know, help is on the way. People you must trust are on their way. They will help you and the Sator out of here. They do have a name. I don't know their names, sadly. I am but a spirit. 
cannot retain that information if they are not my chosen. And who might be your chosen? They finally face you as you realize this individual has no mouth. Just sort of clockwork eyes as they lift a finger. Press against your chest as you do feel their finger before their very body and essence, kind of like someone glitching out, is absorbed into you. On that point, you realize Trifon hasn't said anything in a while, and you look and see, oh, he's been frozen in time, and the moment that kind of dawns on you, he's back. Moving around again. Yeah, he's just checking out his sword. <laughs> just like, okay, I've summoned this thing, why? And cutting back with the main party. Mm -hmm. As you guys are, you know, finishing breakfast, you're kind of, you know, starting to stretch, get ready. You remember your mission. You're going to go essentially invade the last base, take down their tower. Win, you know, fight, fight, fight. Do your goddamn job kind of thing. As around that point, as you guys are kind of, um, you can choose where you want to be at the moment, by the way. At least some of you guys can move your tokens. Nope, can't move it at all. Are you for real? She's moving it right now. Am I, I had. I had another tab open, Nia. How dare you? <laughs> Mine. Okay. Orlaine, Aurelia? Yeah, I can move mine. Can you move CC still? Yes, I can move the baby. The baby. The baby. Oh, Orlaine, can you move? Okay. So you guys are sort of, you guys can pick where you want to be at the moment. You don't have to say where you were originally put. But um, around this time, you do hear the groggy, uh, what, what the fuck happened? Huh? What? From outside of someone who, of someone who got knocked the fuck out and is waking up. The sleepy man. The sleepiest of So, as you all hear him sort of waking up, it is quickly followed by the heavy steps of the Goliath who is exiting his tent. And Percy, poor Percival, the twink, just goes, uh, where the fuck am I? Oh, I feel like I get knocked out. Was I hit by a train? No, you weren't. Oh, fuck, the train can talk. Is he gonna hit me? I'm Tarek. You know my name. I know. Why are you so big? Meat. Got it, got it, got it. Where, um, and like, those are, uh, Orlane, actually. You feel, a, a, like, if you feel like when a phone starts vibrating nonstop, like someone's spamming a group chat, you feel that in your arm. And you realize he's about to summon his weapon. That image taunts me. Look. Mm. 
It can be whatever the fuck you want in this analogy. All you know is that Percy is about to summon his weapon. Um, can I move to see, like, what the other, can I see what Percy's doing? Sure. Because I know I can't see, I know good and well I can't see past Eric. No. I no, it's not. would it's like to point out. No. What's well, up? Well, I'm sitting here. The last time we were playing... Percival told us to come here. This yeah. was his idea. But he just woke up from being poisoned, so let his brain kick in first, please. Uh, um, no. I can't. I can't. Yeah. Okay. Percival. He's just going to come to the side. No, on. no I'm not. Relis, you can't just say no. <laughs> I agree. Fight with it, okay? Yes. Fuck you. Now he's even no. more confused. <laughs> Fuck you. He hurt hey, himself Curry. in his confusion. Yeah. Hate you. Hello? <laughs> Am okay. I audible? So he's waking up. Deidre, Orlane, you guys are the ones that know what the fuck's happening. Can I, like, tackle him? Uh, he's already on the ground. Okay, can I, Hello? like, pin him down? Stand over him. Scold him. He goes above him. Belly so up on you... him! Yeah, sure. Hold on. Y you you can. Uh, first, let's go ahead. Orlane, what was the last thing you heard? I heard everything. I was trying to say something. Okay, what were you saying? Go ahead and go. Orlane, without looking up from the minor illusion he's using, just goes, Percival, I wouldn't do that if I were you. And then it's just the thing of, ah, uh, fucking Elfwink? I do have a name, you're... but you're very close to what I am at this rate. I want to be nice. Um... No, go ahead. Say what you were going to say. I would love to hear what insults you can think of, because I've heard them all. I'm good. Uh, uh, Jesus, what is... Where, where are... Where are we? Deidre's just gonna like, go in front, um, like in between the two, and then like float up so that they're eye level. Because I feel like even with him on, on the ground, he's like not, not at all. <laughs> like he's he, he just just so short. Okay. So you. So it just like floats a little bit to be eye level, and is like, look at who's behind me, look at all these crops. Make the make the educated guess. Deidre has not slept. Deidre is like on edge. You haven't slept? No. Take a point of exhaustion. <laughs> like if they have, it's bit like because yeah yeah they have not slept. They're just like exhausted and tired of everyone's bullshit and very aggressive. Oh, where's no. the th where's the thing? Well, why are you, are you doing, doing that? that? Why are you doing that? Uh, Percy does just kind of go. Fuck if I know. I I just woke up. Uh, uh, okay, fine. Delayed mini me. What the fuck is happening? As he's talking to her lame.
Oh, good. Now you're willing to listen. Mm. Oh, no. You're talking. We can't hear you. Can I be free from hell? Can I please fucking god damn it? Hi, am I back? Yeah, uh, yeah, you're back. We can hear you. For now, at least. Uh, so, Orlane just says, Oh, now you're willing to listen. Well, uh, I don't think I have much of a choice. Everyone has a choice, Eric, except for us. Eric just looks at Percy and goes, You can leave my camp if you want. And then looks at you, Orlane, and goes, we're going to have to talk about that later. Oh, good. More people to drive insane with my theories. Good, yes. EDB, my love. It all comes through at once. Anyway. <laughs> Orlane yeah. basically just said, oh good, someone to drive insane again. Can't drive me insane, kid, you're fine. Just the mild twitch of expression of being called kid and then just, eh, it looks away. Yeah. So, after a while, uh, fucking, <laughs> don't, don't worry about that, Dean, uh, dang, uh, Tarek just looks at Percy, very calmly puts a hand on, uh, Deidre's shoulder, which is most of her body at that point with size comparison, and then just yeah. walks over, lifts up Percy, who is just like, oh, what the fuck? Puts him on his feet, dusts him off with one hand, goes, You in a mood to help out? Uh, yeah. Yeah, sure. See? This group needs to get to your base to take out your tower, you know, kill a god and whatnot. So, what's going to end up happening is you're going to help us. Got it. Uh, can I can, can I do it from here, big big scary person? Sure, you can. I don't mind. So why don't you tell us what we need to do? And like he turns around to the group. If that's okay with everybody. How hard could it be to just walk in and do what we always do? Anybody else got an answer or a reply? Deidre's just, really going... just in the distance holds her thumb up like, yep, okay. <laughs> Deidre's just like cracking like their knuckles and just silent. Remember. Fucking throws the Rubik's Cube at Deidre as a mocking <laughs> shut the fuck up. Please don't. Please don't. You want to fight the monks? <laughs> no, literally, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> You're exhausted. Don't do it. No, th that's why it's gonna happen. Fucking sleep spells your ass. Sit the fuck down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you guys. Oh, fucking Christ. 
So he kind of looks at everybody and goes, I think they're in agreement. Oh, Jackie, do you have anything you want to say or are you just Gucci? I'm all good here. Okay. Uh, and then Tarek just goes, how hard could it be? Well, you're, we're probably going to need to get past the defenses because the co- captain, commanders, you know, the general is, is at my base at the moment. So we activated the defenses. How about the defenses? It's a ground shark with tentacles in a in a not maze maze, if that makes any sense. What? <sighs> it, it's a straight shot. You just you, it's literally there's no way you can't get to the exit no matter what path you take. It's just something's in the grass. And it um it it eats people. Well you... so do Go it's ahead. not yeah, Jackie. Yeah. Go. What what do you mean go? You were trying to say something. I talked over you twice. I apologize. I was just saying it's not the only one. What the fuck does that mean? Think about it for more than a second. No, actually. (laughs) I don't want to. But it's fun. (laughs) <laughs> Hold on. Aurelia's dying affectionately. Rels, what's the good news? Well, I'm, I'm good now. I'm done squeeing. What are you squeeing about? Yeah, you see that? You know that one Wonder Woman gif we post all the time? Which one? The baby. baby. Do you have Uh, a fucking pet? No. Um, my best friend from childhood, who is essentially family, them and their wife are expecting a baby in the spring. (gasps) Ooh. He's the baby. My baby. Nice. Okay. Very good news. Excellent news. Love this news. I'm all good. I'm all good now. Okay. So yeah, no. Uh, Percival explains the whole land shark thing and goes. I I I promise you, it's it's super. It should be super easy to kill. You just need to. Get it out of the ground, but it um, it doesn't want to get out of the ground. So, um, and like Tarek is slowly leaning in towards Percy, and Ter- Percy is just like, "Please, God, I don't want to be pressed against the ground, but you're literally leaving me no." Ch- okay, I'm on the ground. Okay, this is what's happening. Like that kind of like you were far too big for me to try and intimidate you, kind of thing. Can Deidre try to hide a laugh at that? Deception roll. Disadvantage. It's always a disadvantage with Deidre, honestly, at this point. Uh, okay. <laughs> that was so bad. <laughs> That's such a bad roll. Well, I got a four. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, so they do not hide that at all. <laughs> I imagine they like tried to hide it for a second, and then it just fell out. <laughs> okay, so that happens. 
<laughs> After a while, Tarek just looks at all of you and goes, Y'all think y'all can handle that? Or you want me to tag along? I could use a fight. He's just going to summon their weapon and say, Ditto. Okay. You need a nap is what you need, and that's coming from me. Shut up. No, I don't. I'm fine. Yes, you do. You look like death. <sighs> look worse. Deidre's like very much like I'm not gonna listen to her lane, but then looks at Tarek and is like, "Well, I guess, I guess you're right." Yeah, her lane's a little bit insane right now. It's okay. I mean, even if they weren't, <laughs> Tarek is special. Tarek is friend. Tarek is friend, not food. <laughs> Don't channel Scrax right now. <laughs> okay. Choo choo train back on the tracks. Choo -choo. So, as you guys, as you guys begin and sort of like all kind of give your responses uh aurelia jackie did you guys give one earlier said i might have a way to get the um shark out of the earth <laughs> okay jackie in response to what the earth shark can you guys handle a fight i can always handle a fight i could take it in a fight, right? <laughs> Jackie has standards. Usually. That was that was Curry talking, not not Tarek. Tarek has decency. <laughs> I know, and Orlane responded to you. <laughs> so, with that being said, you guys. Ooh, I love being Ranger. Actually, I'm God. Never mind. Continue. <laughs> no, no. We'll cover that in a moment. <laughs> but Tarek kind of looks at all of you and just goes, Okay, I'm trusting you. And Deidre. You're just gonna, like, stiffen up hearing, hearing that and just be like, yes. He gets on her eye level. Oh, what is he, like, laying on his stomach? No, he's on a fucking knee. <laughs> You're three feet tall. You're not an inch tall. <laughs> I know, but he's fucking huge. He's six feet tall. That Close is two of her. Close to seven, but anyways, he gets on one knee and just kind of looks at you and goes, Remember, you need a reason to fight. Find that reason. And also... And then all of a sudden, there's just a tiniest little, tiniest, like, tiniest little two hand, two fingers, smack the back of your head like Denozo, and just goes, get some fucking rest. Okay. A tired, bar a tired one of rage is one without an edge, and one without an edge can't fight, can't have reason. Not a just one. Go lay down for a fucking minute. You guys can leave in an hour. He just gonna just like immediately bolt off to go to sleep. <laughs> Dad said go to bed. <laughs> no, literally. <laughs> That's why Tarek's different. Tarek is dead, but not dead. <laughs> so let's count how many dads there are now. There's Tarek, Hopper, technically. 
Well, Hopper's a brother. Older brother or uncle? Hopper's a big brother. Uncle at first. Tarek? Clyde? <laughs> God forsake, he's a nanny. Eh. Eh. Uh. Only by marriage. <laughs> no, literally. Upsetting. So, as you guys continue, eventually it comes a bit like, oh, okay. About an hour or two, two hours pass, uh, and I will say that is enough to take out your level one exhaustion, hey. even though it shouldn't be, but I'm just going to roll with it. And you guys can head out whenever you're ready. Tarek is going to stay behind with Percy and give you sort of live updates. Uh, I will also say uh, one, two, three, four. Let me go get some dice. Why are you getting dice, bruv? The click clacks. I'm getting my good dice, not my cursed dice. The click clacks. The shiny math rocks. I love that. I don't love math, but I love dice. Orlane, you have spoke. Orlane, I'm so sorry. Fate has spoken. You are holding the other beast cores. Oh. What do you mean? Because... Alter and uh, Lita, I will say that they both kind of went with Karakel to the rogue base. They, after not being able to summon their weapons, they left their beast cores with you. Little material guard gems. Yeah, okay. Again, it was a roll of a dice. Do you not want it? I can roll again. No, it's okay. rolling again fuck you no i'm this is me being smug because it's funny orlane watch, watch it land on orlane again that'd be it hilarious <laughs> please let it it did <laughs> objectively hilarious it said fuck you <laughs> yeah no i'll keep them <laughs> you're holding on to them oh can I make them into a temporary charm for the fucking iPod? Yeah, that sounds so sure. cute. You can make them into temporary charms for the iPod. So, you guys are free to uh, head out whenever you feel like it. It's The iPod is turning into my goddamn actual key ring. I have so many jingly janglies on my key ring. Understandable. Honestly, I felt. Also, a little bit of an echo. Yeah, a little yeah. one. Just a tiny little bit one. Just a tiny CD. Gave you tiny fucking tiny tiny echo. Itty bitty one. Baby echo. Aurelia needs echo, to find a babysitter. Echo. Aww, leave the baby with Tarek. <laughs> Eric just stands up and makes direct eye contact with <laughs> Cece, and Cece stares at it. You're druid right now, right? Yeah. You understand, Cece? Yeah. Mama, don't leave me, please. <laughs> Confused, and like, Aurelia. <laughs> here's the thing. Here's the thing. I know you're not holding him right now. He stands on his hind legs, and then there's, like, both little claws on you. Oh. <laughs> What's the matter, little one? <laughs> He's bigger than mama, mama. I don't oh. want him. Go eat the bacon. He's absolutely not the size of a fucking mother owlbear. Do you want to know how tall an owl bear uh, actually but... is? After a bit, the little dwarven, like almost like a bearded woman kind of dwarven lady comes out, and she's the woman from before when the others were like crowding around you, going oh, to Cece, and she just looks, she looks up, goes. 
Oh, little lassie, do you need someone to watch your baby for you? That would be much appreciated, yes. Okay. Yeah, leave, leave him here. Yeah. I'll take care of the little one. Gently reassures Gently. the baby. <laughs> <sighs> Fucking the echo's back, my dude. So, eventually, yeah, no, little CC gets. I'm not gonna put a token down for, her, but because I don't connect one for. Her, but yeah, little dwarven woman comes over just like, howdy, how you doing? How you doing? Stop it! Then... My boyfriend's bullying me. Damn. <laughs> I can't remember Aurelia's accent anymore, and y'all yeah. get to deal with it. This is part of why I didn't give Deidre one. <laughs> It'll come back to me eventually. So. <laughs> oh, no. So she just comes up and goes, Oh, how are you? Oh, that's fine there. Let me just take care of And she's going to take the place where you are. Just like, right here. Okay. And you guys can uh, leave whenever you're ready. Hold on. I have a song for this. It's in. It's in the iPod playlist. Sorry. <laughs> Nobody in this group is allowed to die. No, literally. <laughs> Banned from death. <laughs> yes. If I can't die, neither can y'all. <laughs> oh, jeez. Eebie, beebie, my love. I think by you, Curry. I really, I really need to adjust these volume settings. Well, like, there. Time. What's up? All right. So you guys, yeah, you're back from me, BDB. So you guys are rested. I'm move you over here because, of course, you slept right there. And mm -hmm. you guys can uh, head out when you're ready. How many times do I gotta say that? Let's head out. Yeah, let's go. I imagine Deidre just asked Buddy to, like, wake them up in, like, an hour. Like, exactly. Because that's when Tarek said they had to leave. <laughs> just, like, wake me up in, like, 45 minutes. An hour and 45 minutes later. Time to wake up. <laughs> I imagine Tarek was like, no, 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 let them sleep a little bit longer. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Okay, so as you guys, you guys are heading out? Jackie. So you make your way... Oh. Uh, it, the scuff is actually because I'm doing, like, three different things around electronics, so it'll break from time to time. Like, my phone is in between my mic and my computer, and I'm doing something on my phone to transmit a song to Spotify. So it's breaking right now. Echo, echo. Okay. So, once you guys are ready, you head out. Are you, are you, sure you guys going to stop anywhere first? Um, do we need to stop anywhere? I don't think we have anywhere to stop. Yeah. Can we you guys can take out sword stump? Can can we stop at Fantasy McDonald's on the way? We have Fantasy no, McDonald's at home. McDonald's at stop. home. <laughs> Jinx! <laughs> Someone put that in quotes. <laughs> Dear Lord. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who did it? <laughs> who left the brain cell on Bluetooth? 
<laughs> I never have the brain cells, so don't look at me. Perish. <gasps> Fucking <laughs> you too. God damn it. So uh, hold on. Okay, I can do <laughs> Scuff King over here. Of Scuffville. Long may you reign. I'll reign about as much as Molly did. Ooh. Uh, I had to mute myself. Ooh. Considering what session we're on, I hope this is good on time, bud. Uh. Uh, yeah, no, um, so after, well, you guys go straight to the maze, mm -hmm. yeah? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good places to be, my dude. Technically, this places is one be. session I... after when Molly did it, so. So you guys place yourselves over here at the entrance. I know the entrance should be bigger. I'm sorry. Wait, where, where's the entrance? Ah. How scuff can this get, I wonder? Okay. Uh, put yourselves in a line if you want to, or yeah, you can, right. like, do... Okay. One more try. Deidre, mm -hmm. need you to put something on there. I always forget how to do this. How do I play the piano? You grab the name, not the picture. Oh, uh, no, that's not right either. <laughs> oh, no, I broke it. Yeah, so the little bo sparkly book that says journal, you grab the name and you put it on the board. Let's try this again. Oop. But that's not in the right spot. So now I just gotta fix where it is. Um, there it is. Um, Inquiry. Uh, Do we want to put the druid at the front of the group? I'll be at the front. <laughs> Do you Do you as a group? Okay, you guys can choose right now. This is just the layout of current current thing. How do you guys want to be laid out? I will go first. I think Aurelia should be at Middle. the front ish. Okay. So we got two votes for Deidre and Aurelia up there. Up front. Anybody else? How's the shadows looking? Ooh. Uh one sided. No, how dark is it, my good dude? About midday, so it's not that dark. Unfortunate. I think Orlane's going to be can... towards the back. Okay. Can, can Deidre be, like, next to Aurelia so, like, Aurelia can, like, guide and Deidre can, like, if something happens, like, throw themselves in the way or, like, try to attack the thing that's trying to attack Aurelia? Does that make sense? I think it's sweet that Deidre thinks Aurelia needs protection. Well! <laughs> Deidre uh, wants to protect people, even though they won't say that. They value guys' lives. I know, it's sweet. Also, DJ, also Deidre wants to, just, wants to just attack things. Deidre wants to commit violence. Yes, Deidre wants to beat shit up. Deidre's like, Deidre has two Jackie. modes. Take it. Jackie, you cool you are? Yep. 
I see where I am. My computer okay. tab is loading, but you can have starting equipment armor, uh, Dean or Dane. Dean Winchester. Sorry. Uh, so with that being said, if you guys are in line in the perfect way you want to go, you can move forward or do what you wish. Um, I know I asked this last time, but how high are the walls for this place? About eight feet tall. Okay, I guess we're moving forward. It's not like Aurelia can fly. Well, okay, Deidre's gonna be like, should I try to get a bird's eye view if I can? <laughs> Nia, what have you done? I haven't done anything. It was working just fine. Like, I we started need to wait for you. Do we need to wait for you? It's been well established that Nia Nia's computer is perpetually on the edge of death, and this is only proof of it. The, the long live the king part got me. It was perfectly fine at the start of the session, up until like 10 minutes ago, and it just decides to break. Yeah. <laughs> no, like literally, your computer is like the equivalent to my apartment's Wi Fi. Both are shit. <laughs> True. Hey, Curry. Hey! What's up? So, That's do you want to know something I can do? What's up? What can you do? I'm going to cast fine traps. Huh? Fine traps. Fine traps? Yeah. Okay. Wow. So, okay, where are you casting it specifically? It's a target of the self, and it reaches out for 120 feet. Go ahead and show me 120 feet for you real quick. Also, oh. make sure you guys don't forget to move. I, I think I'm good now. Right, we're waiting. Okay. Woo. I don't have the thing to measure. Feet from our lane. Holy shit! <laughs> I know I'm not a map gate, but damn. I am a map gate. Oh. <laughs> you know, not only do you discover a couple traps, I'm going to mark them. Keep that right there, please. Holding. That is huge. What the fuck? You are able to determine that there are two traps along there. There are two traps. Another trap. One right here. One right here. Damn it. And... <laughs> Right here, couple here, and a couple here. That's more than two. one here. So, uh, with your your discerning traps or detecting traps? Detecting. It doesn't tell me what they are, just the location. Uh, um. If. If you're saying anything, we can't hear you. I want to say it's 10. It that 10? essentially doesn't tell me what they are, only that they're there. Damn, you and your fucking... Mmm, motherfucker. I'm a ranger right now, bitch. Yeah, fuck you and your ranger shit. You fucked so yeah, up. no, yeah, no. You're you you've detected most of them. I wonder what would happen if I set them off on purpose. There goes my puzzle. I figured. Uh, your, go ahead and reset. Say that one more time because you were so EBDB. I mean, I know what they said, but yes, yeah. it's supremely EBDB. Right, say again. Say what? Ew. 
Can I leave hell for like a second? <laughs> Once uh, you leave, let me know the way out. So you are. Uh, so tell me what you're trying to do. I don't have a bow. I have a whip. You have a whip. Unfortunate. You have the ability to pick up stones off the ground and throw them. Yeah. But that's not funny enough. <laughs> Do you want to throw Deidre at the trap? No. I, or Lane's just going to go, Oh, this is fucked, actually. I don't like this. Please be careful. To uh, the whole group. I will... mm, okay. Hate you, but I love you so much. <clears throat> so, what do you guys do? Um, Deidre's just going to be like, "Can I? Do you guys want?" <laughs> Sass, god damn it. But DJ, what are you trying to do? Oh, DJ's just gonna ask um if anyone wants like if, if they should like try to get an, an like a try to get like a higher like view from like like flying up a bit. Uh you so you're trying to fly up, right? They're asking this to the group before they just go up in the air. Stop. Like, do y'all think this is a good idea? Alerting everything that might be here to our presence? No. I wasn't muted when I said stop irritatedly, did I? Um, I didn't hear you say it, so I guess maybe... Dog was being naughty. Yes, dog was being naughty. So, uh, how do you reply to uh, Deidre, who is basically like, hey, should I go up and get a better view? Do you Don't. Think the trapped maze is going to let you fly. Good question. Uh... And Deidre's going to take, um, like, a. Orlane, have you been talking this entire time? Trying. Damn. Scoff King over here. However, don't be stupid, Deidre. Deidre's just gonna look like, is that a no or a yes? Are you like, going to alert to everything like, here to our presence, or are you looking for a fight? Gotcha. We were told that there was something here for defenses. Do you want it to know where we are? Fair enough. Uh, I will say real quick, Orlane. Yes. Though you don't, there is no, with your 120 feet bullshit, you don't sense anything trapped above you. Statement stands. We're in an enemy base, you dipshit. Well, I guess we're going forward then. Base, you dipshit. Did you? Okay. I know we're not in combat, can but can Deidre enter a rage anyway? Because they're just upset now. Not how rage works at all, unfortunately. I know, but like, they also feel threatened. It's not just about threatened, you have to take damage or deal damage within a turn to maintain the rage. Fair enough. So you would essentially get mad, and it'd be done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, I guess we just keep going forward. 
temporarily Hulk out. Hulk minus. Wait, should Erlang get in front of Jackie? Like, should Erlang and Deidre switch? Maybe. Mm. Uh Do you want to switch? I only ask because um, Orlane knows where like the traps are, so. Sure. Like, maybe they should switch, and I know Jackie shouldn't be in the back. Pardon this so joke, like, but I think Jackie like likes it from the back. Range on the detect traps. Yeah. Extra ten feet. Displace the rest of the traps. So, did anybody hear my joke, or was I sent DVDB? No, it's good. It's fine. No joke from me. I'm not allowed to joke right now. Apollo said no. <laughs> I can say it, but I'll be sent to EBDB for like five minutes. Incredible. You say that as if that hasn't been happening. Fine. Fuck it. Whatever. Jackie likes it from the back. <laughs> Is he just gonna be like, wait, what? You fucking you know sniped me, yeah. It's time for the Christian cracker time. Five minutes to collect yourself. Welcome to the Christian Minecraft server, you fucker. No. <laughs> you have two sluts. No. <laughs> I know. I play one. That's just. That's just counting the, the characters. Back on track, back on track. We need to introduce the team and fucking direction. So, you guys, uh, are you actually, uh, if you're actually moving to where uh, D was, is your detect trap still up? Yes. Okay, go ahead and move to where that is and go ahead and do it again. 120 feet from you. <laughs> I love that I'm doing it. I'm holding the circle. It's me. That's priceless. I would have to recast uh, it, okay, actually. No, no, no. I would have to recast it. It's not concentration. Oh, no. then don't fucking... Shit. Hold on. Are you gonna recast it? No, I think I've found everything that I okay. want. So these two, you don't get to fucking remember. Okay, Gotta okay. have a little spice. So, quit it. I can see that. Okay. With... We, me, uh, okay. Mm. Uh, Dean, Trifon, what are you guys doing? You guys, uh, Dean... It, like it's a perfect fucking straight view to Aurelia, essentially. I was about to say, and Dean would just be like constantly looking out that window. Just so like, yeah, now you full on see Aurelia. Hey, right, so that's and, a wind. Yeah, that's yes, a window. That's a window. Um, and Aurelia, I need you to give me a perception check because I feel like you're being cautious. You're checking the grounds and whatnot. Or are you would, looking? I would like forward? to like to. Like, let this be known. Dean is not trying to hide at all. He is just standing there, just like a fucking ghost prop for Halloween in a mirror. Yeah, like a exactly. window. <laughs> Trifon's gone over to start poking the grass while Dean's staring out the window. <laughs> you poke the grass and then you just see a tentacle kind of over the top as you like pull back in. Just, yeah. That's just uniquely disgusting. I think I see 
people Pe approaching. People? Oh, yeah. yeah. He goes over and goes to look out the window. Is that a pixie? There is no way you guys see Deidre from now. Yeah, no. no, we can't see the fucking three foot short shit in the back. <laughs> Listen here. <laughs> okay, no, okay, okay, no, okay. Right. okay. Yeah, no. <laughs> Trifon peeks out the window as well to take a look. So now there's nope. two faces in the window. <laughs> There's one coming from the top of the window and one from the bottom, just the top one like, oh, who's the new guest? And the bottom one is, there's people on our lawn. <laughs> <laughs> With her 19, does Aurelia see the dumbasses in the window? Yes. You see both of them, clear as fucking day. Yeah. It's Head tilt in confusion of, oh, hey, there's people in there. Fucking oh, Aurelia tilts. Yeah, Aurelia's head tilts, and then <laughs> she sees Trifon's head just sort of tilt as well. It's just like there's people. <laughs> A puppy. Clown clown communication. Do I notice they notice us? <laughs> yes. And he looks at me. And he looks at me. Okay, but question: Does Aurelia notice them noticing her? No. Noticing them. <laughs> yeah, not for the love of God. <laughs> no, no, no. Let her cook. Let her cook. No, no. If you let her cook, she will never finish what we came here for. <laughs> I am saying this from personal experience. I feel like she's this got some points, she, though. This is why she's not allowed to ask about breakfast anymore. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> Good gods. People, people, people. I love you, Nia. Okay. <laughs> right. Train tracks. Focus. Back on. Uh, Typhon, you would specifically see this. The, the first time uh, you see him just visibly relax a little bit, and you see him just curtly smile and give a quick wave over to them. That must look terrifying. Or at least just slowly waves back, like, okay, yeah. Can Earth I sneak around staring. Aurelia? <laughs> know what Arlene's trying to do. Can I sneak around Aurelia? Uh, stuff check versus perception check. Those would be funny. I don't know if Orlane was talking about, like, literally sneaking. Yes, I was. Oh. Oh, you actually were. Okay. You can certainly try. He'd say something else if he didn't mean sneak. True. <laughs> <I didn't hear. laughs> oh, stealth check versus... <laughs> oh, God. That's a pretty good stealth check. <laughs> There's no way. Oh, I literally have to roll a nat 20. Oh, hold on, roll a nat 20. Oh, yeah, no, you're fucked. Um... <laughs> Here, let's see if I roll a nat 20. I do nope. not. Not, uh, oh, not even so fucking bad. close. <laughs> Aurelia's so focused bad. on the weirdos in the window. Hey, look, Aurelia, you rolled <laughs> Relane's modifier. <laughs> With your modifier. Shut the hell up. <laughs> Love you. Train, back on the tracks, please. Yeah. Back on the track. Orlane, you are able to sneak in and you walk on the grass. Mm -hmm. Uh give me your perception. Do you think we should warn them about the shark? That would probably be a good idea. Uh, Orlane, you don't 
feel any different. At this point, Trifon finally does speak up, and it's just like, um, you might want to be careful out there. There's something swimming in the ground. Orlane has his noise-canceling headphones on. Be wary of any tentacles or long appendages you might see. Hey, Curry. If you're talking, we can't hear you. Aside Sorry. from Scuff. Scuff. So Scuff. Jackie, shut the fuck up. <laughs> hey, Curry. Hell yeah. But yeah. Anyway, Orlane, go. Orlane has his noise canceling headphones on. <laughs> oh no, he can't. Well, what about the other three? Who's got his headphones? <laughs> I hate okay, so, My question oh. is well, is it a proper window, or is it just, like, a hole in the wall? It's a proper window. There's glass and everything, but it's, like, oh, lifted. You guys, uh, the, the two in there figured out how to open the window a while back. So they have been, so they have air outside of the fucking death door. Mm -hmm. Um, has Aurelia said anything about Orlane getting out of the way and, like, being in front of them now? A very tired sigh is what that got. Um, okay, so did Jackie say anything? Because Deidre definitely can't see over Jackie. Jackie just kind of does the same side, just tired. You're just going to be like, God damn it, where'd Orlane do? What is a Trifin sneaky little shit, but what's new? <laughs> Trifon's just watching Orlane, and now, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Is the window just cracked open? It is. Well, that's up to you guys. Do you want it cracked open or do you want it fully open? Um, I'd say fully open. Yeah. <laughs> but everyone starts walking out into the field and like e you, uh, you. Do you guys know that the where it's just like no wait. Mm, uh, we that know gift? about the dirt shark. Fantastic! Why are you... Uh, uh, I mean, we did originally have three people. You know where it the was entrance a to your room is? Dane just looks to his right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Trifan also gestures to his right. It's just like, it's right over here, but... um. Dirt There's shark. a shallow grave over there at the moment. Ooh. And no, we do not wish to test our luck. Do or... stay with Orlane. Okay, or... so Dee's <laughs> gonna fly behind Orlane. Uh, Orlane is going to try and climb in the fucking window. Dee's <laughs> gonna be like, Orlane, let me do that shit. <laughs> Orlane starts climbing in the window <laughs> and fucking Trifon just... Backs up just like, well, okay, all right. Did you, you like try to pull the them room. out the window? What are you doing? Get out of the a cat. <laughs> or a dog. Yeah. Because, wait, how tall? Because Orlean's what, like five something? Five foot five. Okay, okay yeah, but I feel like it's still not going to be. I feel like they're still too big for a window. Well, it depends on how big the window is. Yeah. Big enough for a person or lane size to fit through easily. True. Wouldn't consider it a standard window, though. That's my only thing, yeah. though. I feel like it's not a standard window, and I don't know how high it is. Or lane's flexible. Dang okay. That's not besides the want. point. <laughs> it's I don't want them getting stuck. He's been in worse positions oh, they... before. No, I mean inside the room. <laughs> To be fair, stuck in there. I feel like if you can get in one way, you can get out the same way. Yeah, but I mean, Deidre wants like just break the fucking like part of the thing. Do you actually Burn get his that. attention to tell him that? Deidre's gonna tap on Orlane and be like, "Orlane, what the fuck are you doing?" As he takes off his headphones, all you hear is uh, bodies by Sleeping Pool. Please. You're just gonna be like, hmm, what is that? 
and then be like, wait a second, what are you doing? What? Are you two all right over there? He's just gonna like come like like peer around from our lane. Actually, no. Is he just gonna float up above our lane and be like, who the fuck are they? I am Dane. It is a pleasure to meet both of you. I wouldn't be so sure. Yeah, definitely not pleasure to meet me. No one has ever said that. Daedra. Time those things. You too. You're gonna tell me I'm wrong. Trifon, what did you have to say? You are wrong. Let's see Jackie just fucking coming around. <laughs> okay. So. One at a time. No. You, go. One of you guys have been talking. Same time. Okay. One at a time, please. If. If Deidre says something about the glass, Orlane's just going to straight up punch it. To break it. No, Deidre's thing is they want to break the entire thing to get in there. No. Like, as a group. <laughs> Deidre's gonna be like, why not? No. Deidre suggests that, and fucking Trifon just leans over to the window so that he can speak through it a bit better, and it's just like, there's an open door. No, there's not. Oh, then why the... Hold on. Try again. Eh? I heard a why the fuck, but it got cut off. Oh, that was me. Yeah. Oh, I, I heard a not from Orlane. Orlane's just going to have a moment of, uh, no, we're not making a hole big enough for all of us. If you're small, you can get in here. Jackie, don't try. I know you try all the time. Please do not. I don't have the right materials to get you out of another wall. Are you just going to look hmm. behind to see their reaction and be like, they're not there? Trifon just clears his throat and said, uh, again says, there is an open doorway. We do not need to break the walls, please. Can you I climb in the window? I don't want to risk getting that thing's attention right now. Question. If they were able to walk across perfectly fine, it might have left. Hold on, the hold on, hold on. Orlane, what are you trying to say? Oh, sorry. Can I climb in the window? Uh, give me a... Give me an investigation check real quick. Mm. Please. Mm. Mm. Just I'm through anyways, Orlane. Hold on. No. Shush. If you run fast enough and you put your body in a perfect pencil shape, you might be able to fit through that three foot wide thing. Can I grab them when I see them trying to do this bullshit? As the window is only half open, uh, but you... It's fine. You can clear the gap. Can I try to grab them by like? Their I'm not strength? doing it. Uh, oh, thank fuck. <sighs> yeah. But yeah, um, Deidre's going to be like, um, Orlane, they're not back there anymore. We lost the other two. All right, I'm going to cast Misty Step and just step into the room. Okay, Deidre's going to fly up to the window. Can Deidre? I I know Deidre can just get in through the window. You have to put angle yourself in, but yeah, no, you can't. Okay, yeah, Deidre's uh, just going to fly up to the window and then, like, squeeze themselves through. You go ahead and, like, it's like one of those things, like, just, like, you're trying to get, like, that little bit extra oomph in the window room, and then, like, meanwhile, it's straight up just, like, <laughs> for uh, Orle. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome to our humble abode, I suppose. Good afternoon. What's so good about it? Jean calls it a humble abode. Trifon just looks like, yes, because we want to be here. Oh, 
will all be okay next week. Scuff. Scuff King over oh, here. No. Long may they reign. If I can make it through this fucking session, I won't be Molly. So, anyway. Uh, Orlane just says, what's so good about it? The other one's being trapped by a fucking shark. It is what I right. have. It is what I will make use of. Do I'm going to agree with the elf over there. He's just going to be like, right. Anyway, where's the... And then look at Orlane. Where's the power? Am I being hurt? Okay. Uh, or one more time. I was talking to myself. I I'm not sure if I'm actually being heard when I do the lower voice. You are. I was going to respond. Scuff. So scuffed. Oh, what did you say? What was the last thing you said? Last thing you said. The last thing, uh, the last, well, the last thing Trifon said was, "I have to agree with the elf over there." Yeah, I heard that. that. It seems Deidre didn't care. Oh yeah, Deidre just, just straight up was just like, "Okay, they're they're clueless." Okay, so we're late. <laughs> <laughs> Be nice to the new person. When is Deidre ever nice to the new people? Well, forget the fact that Deidre and. Trifin are standing next to each other right now, too. Yeah. Small and rude. Because, like, how, tall is, how tall is Trifin? Six he is feet. six foot six foot one, to be specific. Yeah, so you just go and look up and be like, right, and then look at our lane. So, where are we supposed to be going? I'm going to go Not do something stupid. You, there is an open door right next to our lane. But Trifin has mentioned multiple times. Yeah, but Trifin is straight up, it's like, <laughs> what, we, what options do we have? There the is a, it's like, <laughs> better. Not yes, now, I was not now that. tree. Orlane is going to just do something stupid and step out onto the trap. God damn it! Okay, so Orlane, I'm gonna try and scream. Uh, not scream, or, but or, like, okay. We'll let you. I will say that after this, Orlane. Are you actually going to do this? Or is this a joke? I'm actually doing it. Well, Elaine? For we God's sake. He probably stuff didn't come. It really did. I'm Elaine. actually doing it. Okay. Oh, God damn. Okay. Oh, uh, right. Real quick, Dean, what were you going to say? Go. I was going to like, stop. There's a... And then I'm guessing they just step on it. They step on it. Okay, Orlane, you step on the trap. Give me a very quick investigation check and then a dex save right Can after, Can I use please. this with that dex save because Trifon's going to be grabbing Orlane? Uh, well, let's see the investigation first and then we'll find out. Also, what is Trifon's, like, strength? Not good. <laughs> Okay. That's what I thought, because they're a twin. <laughs> okay, in no. his defense, he at least has a plus two, so leave him alone. <laughs> Children, silence. Orlane, as you step on this trap, you realize the type of trap it is. It is not a trap trap, like one that would open up and hurt you, or do anything to cause you harm immediately. It is a sensor trap. It is letting whatever note, whatever is underneath you, know exactly where you are. Give me a deck save dead roll because originally it was going to be a disadvantage with Trifon's help it is no longer a disadvantage it's just a dex uh, dead dex save Jackie Aurelia you guys see uh, you guys full on see the elf foot step onto something like they're trying to test anything fuck um can I, I roll, roll. dex save hold on uh that is the dead deck save because your help made it no disadvantage. Okay, uh, Trifon, how do you, uh, Trifon and Orlane, I will ask this. How does Trifon help and what does Orlane do to, you know, describe the deck save for me real quick? Like, how do you avoid this? 
when Trifon sees Orlane going to step specifically on one of the exact spots that he had been poking before, too, he, uh, as soon as he sees Orlane step out, he immediately bolts forward and goes to grab Orlane by the back of the shirt and pull him back. Orlane, how do you respond? Quick check for EBDB? Hmm? EBDB. Sorry. Christ. Lane, please. Please. What's up? Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, let's go. You, uh, what do you do as before, this is, I'll say this is before Trifon, you know, tries to scruff you. Uh, what do you do to try and avoid this? Please, not the EBDB now. Oh Walking with us I'm thinking... Okay. Okay. Cool. Can I ask that we be a little mindful about the shouting? Okay. Sorry. We're calling you. Sorry. No problem. I'm going to reaction cast absorb elements. Absorb element. Okay, go ahead and sh click absorb element. Tell me what it does real quick. Why won't it send the thing? That's my question. How do I send the thing? Okay. What does? I... Sorry for interrupting. Hey, sweetie. Yeah. How do is it display in VTT that shows the actual thing it yes. does? Okay. Yes, display uh, in VTT. Spell captures some of the incoming energy, lessens its effect on you, and storing it for the next melee attack. You have resistance to the triggering damage type until the start of your next turn. Also, the first time you hit with melee attack on your next turn, the target takes an extra d6 damage of the triggering type. And the spell ends at high at higher levels. You can cast this spell using a second spell slot, and the extra damage increases a d6 for each spell slot level. What level are you casting this on? Second. Oh, also, it's one real acid, coal, fire, light. Yeah, I see that. Uh, it's... it's okay. You cut it. Uh, Second level, by the way. Okay, so it you get hit with immediate lightning damage. That seems to be a, a, a kind of theme for Orlane, I think. It It's at first lightning damage, and like you absorb it, and you're going to take half of it, I think, yes, if that reminds me. Or you have resistance to it. Does that negate the damage real quick? It gives half. Half damage. Okay. Thank you kindly. Oh. Uh, okay, so four points of damage. You take four points of damage. Ooh. As this thing kind of grabs at your leg, but with Trifon, you are able to kind of be yoinked back if you want to try and join Trifon and, you know, get out of the fucking way? Or do you want to stick with it? Because it is trying to grapple you. Um. Hmm. Do I see it? Uh, its tentacles are wrapped around your leg, or at least attempting to. 
And I'm being pulled back? Yeah. You are being pulled back by Trifon, and it is, a, it is not... Uh, Trifon is the only one with a grip on you at the moment, sort of. Or at least a grip on your clothes. This thing is trying to wrap around your leg. I'm going to cast Hunter's Mark. On the shark? Yes. Okay. Because I can see it. You can see it, you motherfucker. <laughs> what level? First. Okay. So you go ahead and you you summon your whip and you crack the base of your whip against the tentacle as it thumps a mark onto it. I know you can, you know, range this thing, but for flavor text, you thump that thing on there like you're stamping something. And then it instinctively, because you are dealing it damage, yes? Yes. So go ahead and roll the damage of both types as you fire back its damage types. Okay. So 2d6 lightning damage plus what you're rolling to damage it. Do I roll to hit or am I automatically hitting? Automatically hitting. It's attempting to grapple you. And also, uh, it's been a while since I played 5e. Uh, an additional d6 for the Hunter's Mark, right? Yes, it's a d6 for the Hunter's Mark, and then the 2d6 for the damage type. Uh, so, 9 slashing damage plus uh, 3d6 total, two of which are lightning damage. There you go. Uh, small EPDB. So that would be yeah. 21 total? Uh, so 12. 21 total, yeah. You deal 21 points of damage before combat, yes. I'll let myself be pulled back at that point. You get pulled back at that point? Okay, so you damage it and you get pulled back. As it, as you hear what first sounds like a screech but quickly turns into a deep guttural growl and you see the tentacle start withering before it goes underwater, goes underwater, underground again. And uh, Jackie, Aurelia, make survival checks for me real quick. Uh. Okay, okay, it's fine. Uh, Jackie, make one, please. I'm waiting for it to throw. I forgot you have, well... There we Lord of Scuff, you are the Scuff Dice. 17. So, Jackie, you are able to realize fuck. It's a sensor beast. Remembering it's a sensor beast. Uh, following everybody else's lead because then you stand and perfectly still lifts the ground under you a bit but before leaving it seems oh, you really are not poses. really
Are you good? Is Orlane back? Orlane, are you good? You good? I can I can hear the debatable. <laughs> oh no. Hello. No. Okay, listen, listen, listen. Orlane, you can still hear us, right? Okay. Okay. We've done, we've, yeah, we have done the thing before where we've had players do their interactions and whatnot in ch text. So we can do that for the remainder of the session, at least to get the, these fuckers out of here, because we're not doing combat, right, Curry? No combat, no. Uh, Orlane basically said, fuck you, and did half of its initial health. So oh. you, you, you've pretty much, like, scared it away for the time being. Like, yeah, no, Trifon is going to just sort of move around Orlane, and... I will uh, remind you, Trifon, you have a sword. Yeah, I that know. I was about to say he takes he he takes out his sword and he's just starts poking the ground, just like want to come back. Uh investigation real quick. Um, well, Cherry is rolling that, so now's not the time to tell you that the spell I had planned to use is um three D five. Damn. Can Pause. I what? What is up with my rolls today? I've rolled twice and right, both right, were, were right, having right. a scuff Sweetie. night. It's okay, Jerry. It's a scuff night oh. and it's a DC too. You're fine. Okay. Yeah, no, the trap is non-responsive anymore. Yep. <laughs> yeah. What was that, Aurelia? The spell I had planned to use. If the creature fails the save it needs to make, it takes 3d12 of damage. Oh. Really? I'm gonna tell you something I've only told your boyfriend before. Just call me a slur. <laughs> <laughs> Volume. Volume. Oh, Champ. That's an achievement. But you guys, uh, you guys can see why it was a maze now. There were hidden traps and shit. But yeah, no, once Trifon confirms that the trap's non-responsive, he stands back up straight and is just like, I think he scared it off. Take their victories where we can get them? I mean, in this case, yeah. yeah. Especially considering how, and he he, he points to D Jackie. It's just like I think that's about where, the... when Jackie was over here, he points at her and it's just like that's about where the other guy died. I think. Are uh, you two all right? Just a fucking shrug from Trifon. Yeah, understandable. We woke up in here. It gave it a good lashing. I do see Orlane typing in Deidre. Yeah, Deidre said said that, but um, Orlane is currently the Ben Affleck smoking meme of just tired. Who uh, are you people, anyways? Great question. Who are you? Uh, well, 
My name's Trifon. And I am Day. As such, it is a pleasure to meet you all. Really? Why aren't you in this room? We woke and up you, here. You and... see Trifon do take a moment to think. To try to remember why they were in the room. Dane is just going to explain simply at least we woke up in here. There were originally three of us, but one ran out and ended up in a shallow grave where one of you is currently standing. And now you see Dane trying to remember where exactly he or how exactly he got here. And like Inquiry, you said, Kurt, yeah. Does Trifon still have the sword out? He he does still have the sword out. It, it he's it's resting on the ground and he's holding it by uh, upright by the hilt. Yeah, then Aurelia's looking at the sword, and she almost seems momentarily saddened to see it. Should I roll inside, or just fuck it, roleplay moment? Roleplay moment. Roleplay okay. moment, because she's not hiding it. Okay. Yeah, no, he looks over at her and sees the look on her face, and you see his head do the tilt again. And just, <laughs> is something wrong? Your sword used to belong to a friend of mine. Ah. I the think the most of that means you're coming with us then, though. It does? Yep. Um. Ah, uh, well, I Yes, that's better than nothing. Trifon over here realizing I have literally no idea what I'd be doing after I got out of here. You know? Speaking what's up, it isn't the worst idea, but it's certainly up there. We attract trouble like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> well, there would what? be no tomorrow if you hadn't come in. Rescued us. Thank you. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, we probably would have lasted another couple of days in here. Do we have anything to eat other than glass? <laughs> Just, again, no. a shrug from Trifon. Shrug from Trifon, a no from the DM, and just, well, I suppose lead the way. Question to the DM, which way are we supposed to be going? Back to the base, or are we just continuing on? <laughs> uh... Where do you guys want to go? You guys can choose. Do you want to head back to the base to recuperate and try again tomorrow, or do you want to just try and knock out the um, knock out the uh fucking tower today? We're already here. Yeah, already here, and now with two extra hands. So, if I may ask, what are you all doing in here? We're here to um. This is going to sound mildly insane, but I promise we'll explain it later. We're here to knock down this uh, base's tower and, well, fight a god. Not just fight, kill the god. And again, Trifon now just staring at both Aurelia and Jackie, just like... Excuse me? I was about to say... A explanation at all would be nice, but now I might regret have asked it. Asked. We'll wait until after the fight, and I promise we have people that are actually good at explaining things. 
noted. Um, Typhoon over here, just like, I just woke up today, and I'm already being taken to fight a god? What? We are going to fight a god. On par for a curry campaign. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> well, um... Well, I guess I can say that it will be the weirdest thing I've dealt with today. They it, just looks solemnly and just like, all right, let's go kill a god. Misty step through the window. That's not a spell slot. Or is that a can trip, you motherfucker? Wait, it's a can trip. I think it might be a race thing. Yeah. That's it's... Right. Yeah. Oh, it's face that. Okay. Come on, kids. Let's go fight a god. Trifon does glance back at Dean and just shrugs after a moment like, oh, well, better than being stuck in here, huh? I don't know if going to fight a god is better than being stuck in here, but it is, if it is to cure my boredom, I will leave. Yeah, I can get with that. <laughs> he just goes to follow after Aurelia. Yeah. Just like, yeah, no, that's a mood. <laughs> Everyone else leaving the normal way. Except... <laughs> Lovely child. Our favorite boy, Orlane. So we're all heading off to destroy the tower. Yes. We're off to kill a god. Yay. Is this something that's going to have to wait until the next session, though? Uh, we can actually, for this one, we can at least bribe to the base if you guys are okay with that. I'm fine with want... it. I'm, I'm fine with it, especially considering how we do currently have two people with either a dead headset or... <laughs> or EBD, yeah. Uh, guys, you want to get to the base at least and then call it? Everybody yeah. input? Okay. Good. Sounds good to me. Okay. All right. Okay. So you guys Ooh. follow the group because he has he is just trying to put together what the fuck is happening. Around that point, Deidre, trying to keep up. I know you're checking notes for something. Please. Uh. Around that point in time. You guys feel everybody give me a just general perception check. General, general perception. General perception. Incredible. I'm going to fucking riot. Damn. Third roll was the charm at the <laughs> end of the fucking campaign. Let's yeah. see session. Okay, so seven, eight, fourteen. 24, need Jackie's. Right, like, right on the little line connecting the two. What the fuck? So, Dean, Aurelia, and Deidre, you guys are focused on getting through the maze. Uh, Orlane, you gotta just, like, you just, like, at this point, it might as well feel like someone's watching you, but you just assume it up to the fucking white bread man somewhere in the distance. <laughs> not Not much care at this point. Uh, Jackie, you're more focused on Orlane right now. Trifon. You realize that, like, you don't know why, but you just know that whatever was in here, like, whatever the creature was, it's dead. You don't know why, you don't know how, but you just know that it's dead. 
and you feel like this soft feeling of somebody protected you. Somebody's near, maybe, but at the same time, far away. It's not like a bad feeling by any means. It actually kind of feels like a warmth in your chest, like the kind of warmth you get from a hug from like a like a father or like someone who has protected you all their lives. And you just kind of, well, how do you react to that knowledge, actually? He actually does stop for a moment and glances around, trying to figure out where this feeling might be coming from or if he can even spot them which i'm assuming he can't nope good try though and after a, a moment he just a hand lifts to his chest where that warm feeling is and if anyone turns to look at him they'll see a look of confusion on his face just what is this kind of look on his face <laughs> Hold on, Elaine killed me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Elaine goes die. Fuck you! <laughs> Jackie, don't ruin the moment, please! Okay, so okay, you right. guys, yeah, you guys sort of start moving along, and as you, eventually you get over here. Where? Right, right here. This is the end goal. I won't make you go through the maze if you guys don't want to, but um, eventually you guys get to. Ooh, where is it? There it is. Percy Base. Bright lights. You guys get to the Percival Base. It does have its own proper name, but now is not the time for it. Uh, okay. as you guys can put yourselves over here, if you'd like. It's the only path that isn't connected to a building. Ooh. I need to change my color for next session. Is that a better one? Nope. That works. Or... Uh... After, as you guys arrive, you do notice that it is sort of almost ghost townish, but not in like the kind of way of like, oh, there's nobody here at all kind of vibe. As you realize, it's just like, there's no one outside. You can hear them in the buildings and in, like, the, uh, this is the cafeteria thing. And, like, you can see the tower clear as day. Nobody's around it. And you can hear everybody, but nobody's outside. And even though you can clearly see clear as day, the practice range right here. Nobody's there. And it's that kind of unnerving of like being in the middle of New York at a certain time when the streets are completely empty and there's no noises. Like the Silent Hill kind of vibes. Uh, <laughs> and you feel like that's someone should be here. At least a guard, shouldn't there? Someone should be guarding the tower. But they're not. And that just sort of sits with you the wrong way. And that is where we will end tonight's session. We're back, baby! Yeah!